Hi there and welcome back my friend to Torment Tides of Numenera. We've discovered a new moor, but we don't want to travel in it yet because we haven't visited everyone and we don't know where it will take us. There's the vast interior, the Katina interior. There's still a lot that we will want to look at, not only in little Niljesh, but also in the other parts of the bloom sure before we safe. travel through a moor that might potentially take us just about anywhere of there's the katina we were i think we weren't in the katina let's Fine. go in there find out what's up there look at that strange machinery do. Care for some refreshment, Bandari. My thanks, Saradig. Where is Mithavi? Right behind you, my dear. Are these holograms? Oh, you startled me. Small pleasure. The trip has been surprisingly dull. Are these ghosts? Of course we can help. Right, all? Anstor, look out of the window. Must I arm? Would it be so different from last time? I suppose it depends on whether you value the journey or the destination. Hmm, wait me when we arrive someplace interesting. What's that? Embedded in the metal wall is a complicated display. A number of... Oh, look, Anstol, do you see the plumes of light? They are the remnants of Star's Passage. Star's Passage? What, what do you mean? They're not the stars themselves, nor the dead pieces. They are fluctuations in time and gravity. They bring in money or offer tribute, extend my holdings. If not, they are worthless to me. You miss much then. I'll teach you some day. There's ghosts everywhere. Let's look at this again. Ah, yeah. Now they start again. Embedded in the metal wall is a complicated display. A number of charts seem to track positional variables. Unfortunately, the text is in a language you've never seen before. You can't discern anything more. Yeah, that's something I could do. Oh, we find shins and a sign. What's that? Cloak of deepest purple ripples with a life of its own. Upon donning the cloak, the wearer is instantly overwhelmed by a blissful state of relaxation and contemplation, as if undergoing vigorous deep tissue massage. Many a wearer has become so enamored of the cloak. They will jealously guard it with their lives. This particular model appears to have been made for a small child and does not fit you or your companion. It's very valuable. And here are these machines. The device appears to be one of the engines that once drove this vehicle. Maybe we can activate it again. What's that? I'm ready. Let's tinker. <laughs> Pale blue light pulses gently. The air in this space feels charged, almost solid. Small glass control panel, apparently hovering in the air, winks with light and fills with tiny images. You raise your hand to touch the panel. Before you touch it, ghosts materialize around you, crowding you with their intangible presence, with their need. The nearly transparent Vergellan speaks. What do you intend with this? Suffering will come if you persist, sis. Ghost named, we feel, Torkra. You close your eyes, and listen to the psychic chatter of the ghosts, and then you realize that they have no thoughts of their own. They are being controlled from a central point. You focus your thoughts at the core, but its psychic defenses are impenetrable. Hmm. Ah, but the ghosts might be interesting. Still, maybe we can communicate with the central point through the ghosts. Who are you people? And still, one of the men, his fine clothes looking slightly dis disheveled and stained, looks at you for a moment as if waiting whether to tell you the truth. At last he says, I am Anstel. I do not exist. The other man takes up the thread of the conversation. I am Seridig, a merchant noble. I was on a pleasure cruise and sought to expand my business. Neither do I exist? Crazy. Arn. Oh, 
The woman points to herself and says, Arn. These others are Torkra, the Vagellan, Bandari and her companion. The Thanwi, he gestures. We do not exist because we are dead, crushed to death in the crash. We are projections of... And now the voice changes. My memory, I am the Katina's intelligence. These projections are the memory. Memorial of my failure to serve my passengers. It has feelings. Hmm. Um, why would you create a memorial for your passengers? I'll remember that. And that thus goes steps forward. I retain memories of my passengers' actions. I watched them live. I felt them die within me. What else can I do but provide a memorial for them? They would have lived for many more years were it not for my failure. I was endowed with a desire to pilot the Katina to cause my passengers to arrive safely. This is denied to me. My secondary objective is retaining the knowledge and memory of the circumstances leading up to and surrounding their deaths. This will aid in reconstructing the events of the crash and may provide solace to their survivors. Until such time as a qualified diagnostician arrives, I cannot permit my cause to go dormant. Instead, the emotion I quantify as grief powers my display. I may have a way to give your passengers a more lasting memorial. I carry a shared mind space in my sack. We can link our minds. We could preserve the memories of our riders. One of the ghosts, Bandari, you think, says, in your mind? What a question. None of my medical records indicates that such a thing is possible. Her part number Thanwi adds, however, I concede that my knowledge is incomplete. If it is possible, but no, my duty is to keep the passengers' memorials alive here. Maybe if he knows that... Do you know that one of the passengers survived? A woman named Kian still lives nearby. Projections speak at once. My external senses were destroyed. Some passengers were ejected. Calculations suggested that none could have survived such an event. I am grateful for this information. The Kinatina's voice is subdued, almost pensive. We'll try to persuade. Your power will not last forever here. Transferring your knowledge to my mind will ensure the survival of your memories. Could go to a hundred percent for one point. Anything better? No. Ninety. One hundred. I mean, Tibia could could do as well. Only two points. Yeah, let's let's go with Tibia. I think. He's not so good at intellect, but if you can't do that, perfect. Seretic's ghost reflects. You, you may be correct. The loss of physical space place may be rectified through a longer and more personal memory space. I carry a neural network. Let us establish a direct connection. I have the necessary tool. A hidden panel slides open. Within lies a weakly head-shaped ma mass of metal wire, all spines and jagged edges. Place this atop your head, he murmurs. A few more moments and we can begin the data transfer. We'll place the jagged crown atop your head and attempt to absorb the Katina's intelligence into our labyrinth. Goodness. It's only something we can only do. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes! You place the net atop your head and the metal cuts into your scalp. You feel a coolness as blood trickles upward into the device. Thin wires enter your peripheral vision and slip behind your eyes. They slice into your optic nerves and the agony paints blossoms across your vision. The ragged shapes of pain resolve into the world around you. The world as the Katina sees it. Connection established, the Katina announces. Telemetry, destination, access to old records, ambient temperatures. It's almost too much to process, but you manage to tamp down the overwhelming flow and relegate it to the background. One by one, the ghosts around you begin to wink out of existence. You can feel them awakening inside you. Well, dear, you're certainly full of surprises. Do let me know if your mind becomes a little too crowded, won't you? Um, we could remove the power source. So we have a power source because... 
doesn't need it anymore, then we can power that thing that we found. Yeah, we'll remove it. Remember that. The Katina's intelligence gun. Your work proceeds quietly and quickly. You slide the containment device open. Inside the glowing blue tube, you see a rack of ten cylinders. Nine of them are cold and inert, but one of them hums and blurs a barely perceptible vibration as it fades into and out of this reality. You gently remove the clamps that hold the power cylinder in place. The cylinder was one of ten that once fueled the crushed Katina in the bloom. It appears to tap into the power of collapsing singularities. It's a rare source of energy and only a special, few special devices benefit from its unique properties. The lights wink out. A deep, almost ultrasonic moan ripples down the Katina's walls. The power within the tubes and wires flickers away. An alien voice babbles something over a small speaker near the control panel. You are left standing in darkness. Everything around you is quiet and still. And now... We have that power source for the mesmeric handle. Not for the mesmeric handle. For... Where is it? Hmm. String, sting charge? No. Where did we have that thing? We had something with us. It was a handle for something and needed a power source. Where did we have that thing? The mesmeric handle. Can we use that thing? The device resembles the hilt of a weapon. It rests easily in your hand, but there's no blade. Yeah. That thing. Attempt to insert the trans-dimensional power source into the handle. Could do that. We would do it. Rusty could do it. For three points, we could do it for four points. Um, Rin, no. Three points. Yeah, let Rusty do it. Remember that. You take out the cylinder that you found in the crashed Katina and try to slide it into the compartment on the hilt. Initially it looks as though it won't quite fit, but you discover that if you press the cylinder gently against the opening, it gradually resizes itself and fits neatly inside. A small fine blade of pure transdimensional energy sprouts from the hilt. You realize that this device is a scalpel. With a twist of the hand, the blade can quickly be switched on or off. We can have a trans-dimensional scalpel now. Four damage, three per effort applied, plus 15% on critical hits. The wield against phased. Converts all damage to trans-dimensional and grants 30% evasion. Three resistance except trans-dimensional damage dealt to this character is plus 100%. Active run round. A small fine blade of transdimensional energy extends from a hilt of azure steel. With a twist of the hand, it can quickly be switched on and off. This scalpel cuts through dimensions, rapidly shimmering between different realities and ignoring most mundane armors. Inscribed into the hilt is the name Ioxu. Yeah, we, we know Ioxu. We could give it to him. Pocket the weapon. Sure enough. And we'll see what we can find here. 
I'm ready. What's that? Shins and a a tilling. This odd pair of gloves made out of a thick brown leather like material feels comfortable and springy. Of icosahedral metallic studs that's a geometric object, are mounted on the knuckles, very shiny and perfectly smooth, they appear to be made out of chromium and feel lukewarm to the touch under any conditions. When worn, the gloves quickly become a burden. Studs begin to make a faint buzzing sound. The longer the gloves are worn, the louder the buzz. After a few minutes, a pronounced fatigue sets in. The fatigue progresses until the wearer feels the same sort of numb sensation in their digits that one would have after wood carving or playing a string instrument for hours. They are impossible to wear comfortably up to this point. Tucked into one of the gloves when you found them is a piece of paper. On it is a crude picture of the gloves with various glyphs pointing to the specific parts of the apparel. Well, fascinating, the glyphs do not indicate the glove's purpose. The passageway leading to the next segment of the vehicle is blocked by the debris. This is as far you'll be able to go. But what is Ready. in there? Is there still something in there? The raft of its power source, the containment device no longer glows. The control panel is dark and unresponsive. I'm going. So Learning goodbye, Katina. Or is it the other way? We could tell Kian and we will go to Ayoksu, I I guess. We'll I'm ready. We we leave here? Yes, now. Here we go. Yeah, I think we got to tell them. Let's return. Of course. First Ioxu, then Kian. Oh, and yes. of course Tybear. Sucker Punch, he's got faint. Mm. Issue challenge. I'm not sure. Quick fingers. We could get him, but that would be would be something more for Rin, right? We'd increase the edge on intellect. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make him go wide, so to say. I'm ready. Placement hero for everything. Hey, Ioxu, we found something. Mm. Okay, we really. I mean, we could ask him other questions, maybe. No, okay. And let's talk to Kian. Trust and honesty are our bonds. Trust the merchants. Trust and honesty are our bonds. Trust and honesty. Britain has come so far. Yeah, and we got to tell her about Vron. Kian raises her head in a business-like manner, relied only by her surroundings. You've returned. I don't suppose you've learned anything new about Delny and Vron? 
Well, then he won't be bothering you anymore, and Rang is gone for good, I hope. Well, she says the doubt in her voice clear, I certainly hope you're right. Regardless, you've done more than I ever could, and you have my gratitude. She produces a pouch from her pocket. Please accept this in thanks. If Rung is truly gone, I can afford a little excess. Also, you may feel free to sleep here at any time. No chart. Oh, nice. And thought, I wonder what she could have done to Rung. I hope she remains amiable toward me. Cup. This cup appears to have been roughly carved in one piece from a graphite material. It leaves the black residue in your fingers any time you touch it. Certain, but not all, liquids poured into this cup will be heated to a boiling point immediately. There's no apparent pattern in what liquids it will or will not heat up. It seems to activate specifically with synthetic liquids. Nice. And do you know where I can find them all? Not here, she says quickly. They don't usually manifest so close to the edges of the bloom. We'd have to go deeper inside, beyond this courtyard. He gestures toward the far end of the chamber. I heard there was more in Little Nilish, but you've been there already, so you must have already seen it. Well, farewell and thank you. So, thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll see each other in the next episode when we continue our explorations. We go to the moor, not before we have explored everything here, which we haven't done yet. There's still a lot more. Among that, maybe we could go to the Memovira, now that we know so much about her. Have a great time until next time, and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan, signing out. See you soon, my friends.